today we have joining me uh, UFC Fight Pass so Pancras English commentating team member uh, on UFC Fight Pass Guy Delamo. What's going hey, on, John? Guy? Hey, thanks for having me. No doubt. Um, now the first thing I want to ask you is, how did you get your job commentating on UFC Fight Pass for Pancras? Well, I think it was just by uh, default, really. You know, <laughs> they started doing uh, the Fight Pass thing, and there's not too many uh, fighters here or people in Japan that have MMA experience and can speak Japanese and work with uh, the Pancras crew because most of the uh, production staff, they don't really speak a lot of English, you know. So mm -hmm. it, uh, I think they called me for the first show where I worked with a, a voice actor. And he didn't speak any Japanese, so it was super stressful. And that guy didn't even uh, speak any, uh, he didn't even know anything about MMA, really. So I was pretty much just talking my, my, uh, <laughs> talking my shirt off the whole, whole time, just trying to keep it active. But, but yeah, yeah, but glad we found uh, Stuart, who's another longtime uh, uh, foreigner in Japan that's been doing MMA since way back in the day as well, you know. Uh, and I've been here uh, 14 years. This summer makes 14 years. You know, pretty much my whole uh, MMA career was here. So, yeah, your whole career, except for one fight, I was checking it out. You fought yeah, in the yeah, Philippines no. for PX. Right. Yeah. Other than that, you've so, been fighting your whole career in Japan. Like, there's not many guys out there. Like <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of funny. I didn't mean it to go that way either. You know, uh, I grew up in Hawaii. I wrestled in Hawaii. Uh, moved to Oregon for a university, and I wrestled there. And when I was there, I started going to a uh, jiu-jitsu gym and doing uh, and started practicing MMA, jiu-jitsu while I was wrestling on the off-season. I'd go to the gym uh, and practice MMA and jiu-jitsu. But uh, when I graduated from college, I, I, I still wanted to compete. And the only thing that was left were, uh, uh, was MMA, you know. So I did a couple of amateur events down in Oregon before mm -hmm. I moved to Japan. Uh, back in Portland, it was called Rumble in the Roseland. I, I tapped the guy out in like 20 seconds, my first uh, first fight out there. And the second fight, uh, Matt Linland and uh, Randy Couture had an event out in Oregon promoting a lot of amateur and young guys. So I went and fought one of their events. And then I came up to Japan. And, uh, yeah, just interesting. But uh, well, who took I you did, there? Well, uh, I, I, I studied Japanese when I was in, in college. And, uh, but I'd graduated. I still couldn't really speak very well. So I had a, uh, a major in English literature and Japanese language, but I was kind of embarrassed because I, I, I had a, a major in, a, in Japanese language, but I still couldn't really speak or, or uh, mm. at a fluent level. So my, my uh, teacher, my professor said, oh, you should just go to Japan, teach English for a couple years, and then, and then you'll be fluent after that. I said, so I said, oh, okay. So I didn't come to Japan for fighting. I came here to study Japanese and, and teach English. So I got like an a English teaching job. And I came up here on my own. And uh, when I first came out here, I was in Shikoku, which is southern Japan. It's, uh, in Japan, they call it Inaka, which means countryside. Means there's no big buildings, no city life. Uh, but I loved it because I'm also a surfer from Hawaii. So I just went surfing every weekend. And I didn't even train uh, for like a year or so until I finally found like a little gym to train at. And guys that were just getting together and rolling around. And from there, I trained with them, and I started doing amateur shuto uh, tournaments. And so after a, a, a season of that, uh, I decided to join the, uh, the All Japan Amateur Tournament, and I ended up taking second place at that tournament, and they gave me my uh, uh, you know, professional license, I guess you can say. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll stay a little bit longer, you know, instead of going home. But <laughs> good. Uh, 14 but so, years later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then 14 years later. So every year, too, I would say, oh, I'll go home next year. I'll go home next year. And everybody kept asking me, guy, when are you going to come home? Ah, oh, next year, just one more year. <laughs> and then every year, I'd be like, ah, oh, just one more year. So about like five years ago, I just said, oh, I'm not going to say I'm going home anymore. I think I'm pretty much stuck here now. You're just going to show up one day. You're not yeah, gonna yeah. Anybody. Yeah, I'll just show up and <laughs> just surprise everybody. They'll look at me like, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> For real. Uh, yeah. Well, that is a crazy story because a lot of guys have that kind of similar story of coming to uh, like Asia, especially some Asian country, 
And then they get here and they think like, oh, I'm going to be here for a couple of years and I'll just go back. And they end up being here for 10 years or still here. And they never oh, yeah. been back for so many years. And their family's yeah. like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> just like, it's like the black hole over here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. You know, like the longer you stay, the harder it is to leave. You know, since I've been here, uh, you know, four years ago, I started my own business. I, I own my own English school too now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I, just last year, I started a, a Airbnb business as well. So I have uh, four apartments that, that I, uh, you know, I manage and uh, rent out to, to all the tourists that come to, to Japan. Wow, that's so, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's great for you. You know what I mean? Like that's uh, two businesses. Are you, are you kind of putting your fighting career like on hold? Or well, well, what's going on with well, that? not really. Well, not really on hold, but uh, I do feel like I'm at the end of my career. Mm-hmm. I have about one or two more years uh, left, you know, which means maybe two or three more fights at the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so I'm planning for the, the next stage of my life right now. You know, when I first started, I was lucky to have a really good manager. His name was uh, Tony Tsukamoto, but uh, he told me, oh, guy, you got to you gotta get ready for that second part of your life. Every fighter has two lives, he said. So the first part is your fighting life, and it's so short, he tells me. You know, it's just like this. But your second life, that's the long one. That's when you really got to prepare for. So, you know, so it's all been about building skills while, while I was fighting and whatnot. Well, that's right great, to, great to hear that you are smart enough compared to <laughs> other fighters to kind of set yourself up. You know what I mean? Because a lot of these guys kind of have a lot of excuses of why they're not doing something else because they have to focus on this 100%. But it seems like you have a good balance because, you know, you're doing many different things at the same time. Yeah, thanks. That's a, that's a nice compliment. I mean, of course, there's always that, uh, you know, that, that uh, balance, like, you know, you have to go all in. So I don't know. Maybe I would have been more successful if I just focused on fighting, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. You know, I can't, can't have any regrets now. It's just a little too late now. <laughs> exactly. You know? So yeah. you said that you got about two years left. That's a good, you know, t- two to three fights, like you said. Yeah. Do you have, like, anybody in tank craze that you're like, hey, I need to fight that guy before I hang him up? Yeah, actually, I, there's – and they're all rematches. I just want the rematches. <laughs> <laughs> so right, right now, the – so uh, so actually on uh, Pancreas 290 coming up in, uh, in another week or so is, mm-hmm. uh, is Takaya. Takaya, you know. Um, I lost against him. I had a good first two rounds, won the first two rounds, and I just uh, didn't have enough to, to take the victory home in the third round. And he ended up knocking me out in the last 45 seconds, you know. And he's yeah. kind of like, you know, one of those uh, pride champions. He'd be a big trophy win, you know. I, was, I felt like I just let that slip out of my fingers. And, you know, I took that fight, like, on a short notice. It was, like, three and a half weeks notice, uh, you know. So, so I feel like, you know, you know I, I deserve uh, another shot, you know. Well, you're next the, to the Pancrase bosses, so you could kind of whisper to them, yeah. like, hey, you know, yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. On with this guy. Yeah, yeah, I got to sell, sell it to them for sure. But uh, the, the other guy I want to fight is Malagari uh, Nazareno, the current yeah. champion yeah. right now. He's, he's a, a really tough guy. Yeah, he's he is guy. a beast. And such a cool guy, such a humble guy. Unfortunately, he didn't fight in a, uh, uh, last month's event uh, in Pancrase 289 because he had, uh, he had knee surgery. And he sent me a photo on Facebook. And yeah, for some reason, after, after he beats me up, he, he goes and friends me on Facebook. I was like, ah, all right, man. <laughs> I was like, all right. But he, he knows I commentate too. So I asked him, oh, is there any message you want me to tell all the Pancrase fans and whatnot? And he said, oh, just tell mom be back at the end of the year. And I'm, I can't wait to get in there and defend my belt. This and that. So, but he's just a really positive guy. I know he's working hard. But uh, it looked like he had big, uh, uh, it was a big surgery, ACL. Uh, he had ACL uh, uh, surgery, so. so. So how long is that, he supposed to be out? Do you know? Well, I, I don't know, but he said uh, he wants to fight at the end of the year. But an ACL uh, surgery or injury is actually a really, really hard uh, injury to recover from. It takes a lot of fighters at least six months to a year even. It like, depends on how much rehab and, and how well their, their rehab is going and how well the surgery went. So mm-hmm. you can't really uh, be sure. I think him saying he's going to fight at the end of the year is very optimistic. You know? Do you think, do, you, do we smell an interim title coming? I think, I think so, you know, and, and I hope they do that. I, I don't want, I don't want to see all these other fighters uh, sitting around and waiting for, mm-hmm. on, on their, on their thumbs for, for a title match. But, uh, 
but definitely uh, they should have an interim. Who match, do you so. think are the guys in the featherweight division that could fight for maybe an interim title at the end of the year? Well, that's a good point, but definitely uh, in this next fight, you're going to see uh, Hanzo uh, Tanaka, and he's the guy that knocked out uh, Hatsu Hiyoki a couple of fights ago. Oh, okay. And in, in the first round, it was a massive knockout. It was amazing. It was and, serious, uh, man. It was yeah, serious. yeah. Uh, they had to take uh, Hatsu Hiyoki out on a stretcher. He was uh, having uh, seizures and whatnot. It was, it was quite amazing. Damn, that's scary. But, yeah, yeah. But definitely him and... Uh, and actually, uh, 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 the guy that just beat uh, Isao, uh, the guy from the Philippines, he was a wow. PX fighter. Yeah, he's the former Bantamweight champion over there in PXC. Kyle. That's right. Uh, what is his? Uh, Kyle uh, I, Aguan. 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 Yeah. Kyle Aguan. Yeah. Yeah, Kyle Aguan. And he had a really good fight. I wasn't, uh, I didn't really expect much out of him watching his first few fights. But it looked like he was just getting a, uh, and he said it himself that he was getting used to the kind of, uh, uh, you know, fighting on the new uh, organization. You know, it was kind of a, he was a little nervous. He, he knows he, he was, he had a few regrets himself. He feels like he didn't really like, uh, was able to show what he, what he fully had his full potential, his first couple of fights. But his last fight against Isao, wow, he was on point. And Isao is a beast. Like, he took him apart pretty, pretty handedly. You know, I think he lost the third round, but, uh, but he, Oh, no. No, I think Isao won the first round, and Aguan just definitely took the second and third away. But, uh, yeah, the, in the second but, and third, but, it seemed like he beat him up pretty good. Yeah, yeah. He just was he found his pace. Yeah, yeah. He found his pace. He had a really, his jab was working really well. He's working all, a lot of different strikes, and uh, he was working uh, um, really good takedown defense and not letting uh, uh, Isao uh, implement his game. You know? So definitely Kyle Aguan has a shot. Uh, Tanaka has a shot and he's gonna fight in the next bank race against uh, what's that guy's name? Um, Yuki Nakamura, uh, Maha Dojo guy, so like a Maha Sakurai protege. Mm -hmm. And that guy's won a lot of fights, I think he's like on a, a big uh, fighting win streak. He's only ranked number nine yet because he hasn't really fought the top tier of bank race guys yet, but uh, he's fighting Tanaka next, so that's gonna be a big, uh, uh you know, a, a big, uh, uh, you know, proving point for him. So I think the winner of that fight against maybe Aguan would be a good interim title match. You know? So you're it, saying it, that this fight in 290 coming up mm -hmm. versus Tanaka versus Nakahara, that's one of the fights, if you're going to watch one, you should yeah. look out for that one for sure. Featherweight division. Yeah. Yeah. And it, could, and I, it would be the winner of that fight, I would say, would, I'd put him against Aguan for an interim match. Because... Uh, Isao was uh, ranked number one, and he was supposed to fight uh, 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 Malagari for the for the championship belt. But uh, yeah. because uh, Malagari got injured, Aguan stepped in and beat him. So you know, definitely he gets uh, gets the shot too. In, in you know, in my eyes, but I think you just never know. To beat Isao. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, Malagari definitely had a much more stronger ground game. He wouldn't have got taken down. Um, and Malagari also has very good technical boxing. His father is, is a, a, a boxing coach, you know, was a professional boxer, and it's his own boxing coach. So he gets, uh, he has pretty good hands. You know, when I fought Malagari, uh, I had a lot of trouble. I thought I was going to do a lot better um, uh, at the stand-up portion against him, but I didn't, you know. Like, he was very good at the uh, stepping in and out and changing distances, and he kept landing those counter punches. He just got me every time. He, who did he beat for the title? I forgot. It's uh, in my mind. He beat uh, Issei Tamura. Issei yeah. Tamura, yeah. And uh, so that's a crazy B guy who, uh, who fought in the UFC. Uh, but he only had about three fights. He went one and two, I think. And then he fought in Bellator, didn't do well. And he came back just yoked. I mean, he looked like a totally different fighter than before he left to Japan. Mm. And just smashed. He just smashed in Pancrase. Just smashed all his fighters. And, uh, and then he went up and he won the, mat the belt. Uh, but uh, uh, and then he lost it to Malagari, like pre and Malagari smashed him. He beat yeah, him, took that, him out of the, yeah, that was easy work. Like Malagari <laughs> made easy work of Tamura. I was shocked. Yeah, he made it look super easy. Yeah, you know, like uh, real easy, like but like hot butter or not hot butter, <laughs> on butter, right? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> yeah.
But uh, yeah, like you like you explained to me, Tanaka is the guy that fucking starched Hayoki, uh, who never yeah, gets yeah. knocked out. Who never, uh, never. He's yeah. he might go to decisions, but he never gets hurt terribly like that ever. Yeah, and, and that was a super yeah, was so surprising. I like I I jumped out of my seat. I was like. Yeah, I was ready to swear in front of the mic. I was like, ah, what the fuck? Yeah, everybody. Everybody was. Yeah, yeah right. Because when I was watching it, I was shocked, too. Like, I usually don't get shocked. But that one, it's like it just came out of nowhere. It's like somebody doing a backflip knockout kick right. on somebody. You right. Know? Like, and you right. don't really know Tanaka. Before that, yeah. Tanaka, was he was around, but. He yeah, and he's only. Right, and he's only had like uh, Tanaka's only had about uh, a dozen or so fights, you mm-hmm. know. So, so not a lot. And I remember seeing him years ago in Shuto, and he was always a very uh, solid fighter, like a really nuts and bolts fighter, who's strong but never really had anything, you know, uh, stand out. So, he, but he'd always win. He's always at the top, you know. But so I'm, I'm not really sure either, you know. So if uh, Hatsuhiyoki was just overconfident. Uh, but it was a well-thrown punch from uh, um, Tanaka because uh, uh, Hatsuyoki, he, he was throwing a really good combination. And Hatsuyoki, he just, uh, he ducked that, uh, uh, let's see, Hatsuyoki is here. So he ducked the punch and he threw that overhand right. It was perfectly timed and well-placed right when Hatsuyoki was stepping in and, got, and he got fucking stopped. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I don't know, we'll see. Listen, whoever's listening to this, they need, if you haven't seen the knockout, the Tanaka knockout on Hayoki, go on Fight Pass, check that shit out. Because oh. that shit's oh, crazy. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That's one of and the that, knockouts of the year. Oh, uh, it's gotta be. It's gotta be. It was it was it was so shocking. And he was the underdog. I think he was ranked number eight or nine at the time. And they went in against Hyoki, who was number one, and we all thought he was gonna get the title match. And then he got smashed. <laughs> yeah. Well, going back to two eighty nine, there was like two fights that really kind of stuck out to me. Of course, uh, Senzo, Senzo getting the title, and the way oh, yeah. he won, it was kind of like. Which one? Senzo, the title fight. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, uh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The flyweight title when he yeah. beat uh, Yamaguchi, Mamuro. Yeah. That yeah. the way that was... he fought. I never seen Senzo fight before, but the way he fought was very similar to like Michael Venn and Page. You know the guy oh. in, in Bellator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, very yeah, smooth, and... striking. Right. A really good footwork. Like, he showcased really good uh, boxing skills and just fast. You know, yeah. So fast. You know, and Mamoru is a tough, tough guy. You know, super tough. Uh, but Mamoru couldn't do anything. He can, <laughs> uh, you know, like Senzo's just reach was just out of his reach and his speed and his power. Just, oh my goodness. It was a really good combination to see. Like, really talented guy, really talented fighter. You know, yeah. It's- you know, those, yeah. Yeah, what do you think about his future? Like, with oh. Enzo, do you think he could beat uh, all the top contenders at Flyer? Because this belt has been kind of bouncing around, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, I think he can. You know, he's definitely got it. You know, he's got what got the skills, and I definitely want to see him fight more high level guys like Mamoru. Mamoru has been all over the world too. He's fought in the U.S. He's proven his his uh, his worth, but now we can see Senzo like kind of like the, the next level guy. And, uh, uh, and Senzo's actually, you know, I have this thing about, uh, this pride about pancreas where the, 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 the top pancreas fighters are really high level, like world-class level, I think, you know. Uh, and I really want to see him fight some more and more foreign fighters, you know, from Brazil or the States or, or whatever. Or even go to Ryzen maybe, perhaps, or, or even try a shot at the UFC, you know. Well, th- didn't pancreas just release this, like, secretive video where they're like, there's a big <laughs> announcement coming on October, I think, 10th or 9th or something, yeah, right? Like, yeah, it's like yeah. we're doing something. And, it, it is, and I think it showed, like, the U.S. flag with the, the Japanese uh, flag. And it's like, what are they going to fucking do, man? Like, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Us. What's going on? <laughs> I yeah, know, yeah. You know something? No, we, we hear, like, hint, hints and whatnot, but definitely uh, – uh, keep your eyes peeled for it and make sure you watch uh, Pancreas 290 because that's where they always, you know, they're telling us they're going to make a presentation, but they're not even going to tell us yet. But uh, so, so I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, you know. Like, well, uh, the best way to keep guys? a secret 
is to not tell anybody, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me. I'll, I'll tell everybody, man. <laughs> if you th- if you, even if you think you're not telling anybody, you're, tell- you're telling somebody, you know, you're telling somebody yeah. close to you. And yeah, yeah, I say, like, yeah. don't tell nobody, you know, it moves yeah, on. Yeah, right. That's how secrets right, exactly. open up. So it's all exactly. good. Um, but yeah. the other fight is uh, Matsushima. He took on oh. uh, the former UFC featherweight. Uh, you yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, Koyomi Matsushima. Yeah, that's right. And he beat uh, uh, Kasuga. Kasuga, yeah, right? Kasuga, yeah. The former yeah. UFC guy. And right. And this Matsushima, I've seen him fight a few times. The last, right. I remember he lost once to um, Marlon Sanjo, Brazilian. Marlon, Marlon Sanjo. Yeah, he lost to Marlon Sanjo for those elbows. He right, those right. elbows when he was going for the takedown. But I think yeah, Matsushima, I he's a strong fighter, man. Like, he's very skilled, fast, yeah. scrambles are great. But the thing is, like, is he, like, a is he a fighter that they can promote, you know? Because he can win. It's just that, is he, does he have the style to promote him, like, into, like, a higher, higher level right now? Do you think so? Yeah, uh, I think so. Well, well talent-wise, he's got everything. You know, and he's still very young, so he's he's made a few mistakes. You know, he got he got beat by Marlon Sandra, like you said, but up until that that moment, it was very tense. It was a very tense fight for both fighters. You know, it was, very, it was still a very close fight until that that point. And I think we're just seeing kind of his inexperience. Where uh, he made a couple mistakes with Marlon Sandra, the veteran took advantage of him. Uh, but he, the way he fights, you know, the way he he, uh, he smashed Kasuga uh, in that last fight. Kasuga is super good who's another really good scrambler, another really strong and uh, dynamic fighter. But Matsushima just out-scrambled him and, and out-pointed him and just out-powered him too. Yeah, he's a beast. Cause, and because he's so exciting, uh, I think they can definitely promote him. Yeah, like, in my opinion, like Matsushima, he's one of the young guys that you need to watch. He might not blast off, like, in the next year or maybe even two years, but he's going to be some guys. But oh, I think yeah. in like like as he gains more experience and he gets more gains like I guess amasses more skills to finish right, fights because right. he's kind right. of a like is he kind of a decisionator a little bit right now? No, no. Well, uh, well, he's had a lot of good first round uh, knockouts, mm-hmm. you know. But the thing is, like he's fought a lot of good guys already so early, you know, because he's done so well. So he's a lot of first round knockouts, but he's had uh, uh, these matches. <laughs> Against these really good guys like Marlon Sanjo, where he just got, he just made mistakes or he wasn't able to finish it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I definitely we need to see him again. We need to see him fight more, and I think he should just fight more and more and more as much as he can. Because he's how old is he? He's he's still like twenty two or something, not twenty three. Or yeah, he's just really, really young. He's really you know, young. and and to to go up against a guy like Marlon Sanjo so early, you know, like. You know, it's all right. And to, to beat a guy like Kasuga in the last ra- last fight like he did, which is why I don't think he's able to finish uh, uh, Kasuga because Kasuga is also very, very strong, very good, you know? Yeah, so, for sure. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. One more guy from 289 is Ro- Royal Roy Hata. Who yeah. Is another yeah, 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 yeah. Ryo Hata. He, hey, he got, he got crazy ground skills. Yeah. But he... It seems like he's like losing more often now than winning because he yes. takes too many risks. I think he doesn't like, you know, and he ends up on his back a lot. Yeah, and, and that's the thing because he is a, a a pretty much a pure grappler, you know, trying to fight MMA. So he, he he's like one of the last uh, of his era, you know. Nowadays we're seeing MMA transition from where you used to have a lot of kickboxers fight MMA. We used to have a lot of boxers fight MMA, wrestlers fight MMA, and in uh, and, uh, and grapplers or jiu-jitsu guys fight MMA. And now Ryo Hata, who's been very successful so far, like he was a champion, I think, in Zest. Uh, so that's an Osaka. Uh, more, more. It, it, it's a professional event here in Japan, but it's not as big as Pankrace and Shuto. But he, he won the championship there, and he came up to uh, Pankrace, and he's been getting up. <laughs> yeah. He had a really he had a really hard fight against the uh, uh the champion at uh uh what's that guy the, the guy from Okinawa the really good guy. Tsunabe? Uh, the light, 
Yeah, Sunabe. Sunabe. He got uh, he got smashed against Sunabe. Well, Sunabe smashes everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. But that's my uh, favorite he, fighter in Pad Craze. Oh, really? Awesome. That's my yeah. favorite fighter, man. Like, yeah, that that's dude, another that guy. He's like 40 years old. Yeah. Beating yeah. everybody's yeah. ass. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know? Like, he's another guy. I, I think he's going to fight in Ryzen uh, uh, pretty soon. They're, they're having talks about that. But he's okay. another guy. I definitely want him to see him fight overseas or, or against uh, foreign fighters because I really want, uh, you know, Japan's got to step out of their comfort zone a little bit. We got talent here. But they do need to showcase it a little bit more. Go fight in uh, the outside events or, uh, you know, rising. You know, we need to cultivate these guys a little more. I think it's up. lovely that Pancras, Ryzen, Deep, they have a good relationship. Yeah, I that's a that's good point. that's great because in other countries, you don't see that between promotions very often. Right, right. You know, and, and – uh, but, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, yeah, and that's how it has to be, I think, for Pancrase because they've always played, they've always, uh, you know, played in the shadow. They didn't have the money like, uh, you know, Pride or uh, mm. Ryzen does to, to do the promotions and get on TV. But they're playing it really smart by developing talent and then feeding them to Ryzen, feeding them to UFC. And that makes us look good. That makes Pancrase look good. And, I, you know, and all props to, to our new uh, uh, CEO, you know, um, Sakai san, you know, he's doing an awesome job. You know, a lot of changes since he took the took over uh, Pancras a, a few years ago. For sure. Um, now, going to uh, talking about feeding, you know, like uh, other promotions from Pancras. You had UFC Japan go down the other weekend, right, and right, right. You had some Pancras fighters, former champions, like Suri Kondo who is already yeah. huge in Japan, might not be huge anywhere else, but in Japan, right, right. from what I've heard, she is already pretty popular. Right, when fighting, she fights right? at, yeah, when she fights in Pancrase, oh, all her fans show up, everyone goes bananas when, when she uh, jumps in the ring. <laughs> what did you think about her, like, signing with the UFC so quickly? Like, instantly? Yeah, yeah. You know, definitely, like, go for it. But, uh, uh, but I'm not quite sure she's, she's uh, fought that level of uh, uh, competition yet, you know. But, you know, what are you going to do? You know, you're going to stay here and wait. She has to go find that, that level of competition. That's why she's going, you know. So she needs that. She's not getting that, that competition here. So she has to go abroad to UFC. So all props to her, man. Like, I hope she does well, you know. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna go. I'm definitely rooting for her, though. Yeah. Well, her first fight was against uh, another fighter, the Korean girl, who has a very similar record. Kind of new to the UFC, also, and they had a pretty good fight. You know, it was a split decision win for Kondo, but right. it just kind of shows you that Kondo, she needs to develop more to be able yeah. to go up there and stay in that division in the UFC. If she doesn't develop herself, she's going to get washed out. It kind of like what that, happened to, uh, oh, what's her name? Nakai? The oh, yeah, girl. yeah, Rina Kai. Yeah, yeah Rina, Rina Kai. Kai. Kind of like what happened yeah. to her, you know? I don't want yeah. to live in the condo. I like condo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And, and let me just say one thing about Rina Kai. Like, she, she went to UFC – when they didn't have a lot of weight divisions. Like, she went out, wrestled against, oh, she fought against Misha Tate and these, these, these girls who are, like, top level. But she's not that weight class. She's, that, that's not her weight class. She's a lot smaller than that. You yeah. know? So, so she's definitely a pioneer that started stuff uh, for, uh, for, uh, for Shudi Kondo and whatnot. So, you know, I would like to see her go back, you know, maybe again under, uh, you know, uh, the proper weight class against fighters more her weight. But yeah, uh, with uh, Shuri Kondo, you know, and uh, like you said about her competition, yeah, I hope she does stay on the undercard for a little bit, you know, work her way up, you know, get her skills and her confidence together, get her, get her experience together. In, well, she has tons of experience, but just in that promotion, you know what I mean? For sure, yeah. They got to develop her. If they just throw her to the Lions, and it actually happened to, like you said, Rin Nakai. It happened right. to the Korean girl, Hamzoi, when she, she's actually an atom weight. But she went oh. and fought in the uh, strawweight division, which right. everybody is much bigger than her. Right, she right. basically got thrown to the Lions top 10 fighters over there, and she got washed out. Now she's in road, but she's the champion over yeah. there now. And Adam right. Wilson, uh. So 
I kind of, you know, I guess in the UFC, it's it's like kill or be killed. It doesn't. They don't care if you need to yeah. be developed or whatever. So yeah, yeah. But it's good to. I wish they would try to spend some time with these girls, and yeah, give them better matchups. Right, right. That's a good point, actually. You know, um, and yeah, it is a shame. That, like that's why I understand your point. Like uh, maybe Shudi Kondo would have would have done better, like fighting in uh, I don't know one of these like Road FC or uh, Pancrase or even Ryzen for a little bit more, and then going off to UFC. But but it's hard to say, man. You know. Yeah, because when the UFC yeah. is the UFC, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I gotta turn down the UFC. You're not gonna exactly. turn down a contract. With them. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now, but so you know. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say so. So that's a good strategy for like just uh, don't jump the gun. Don't jump in the top ten yet, just yet. You stay on the undercard, you know. Well, if her manager, and that's why the manager's there. The manager's right. there to help her, and like you know, like this matchup's not gonna be good for her. So, fuck that. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. But, you know. Okay. Yeah, this exactly. one, okay. This one in this country. Okay. Let's do that one. Right. Kind of be because Siri Kondo, she's still fairly young. You know what I mean? Like, she's only 27, 28 years old. So, oh, right. It's not, she's not like in her 30s or something like that. So, she still has a yeah. little, a couple of years to maybe get a, a couple of good fights and then go for that belt or whatever. But right. I think she has potential. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. She's definitely got uh, the, the skills. She's got the wrestling and the kickboxing, you know? And we, I, I don't think we've seen everything yet, too. So, you know, we'll see. We'll um, see. Now, um, the other guy that was signed actually at the, like, Around the same time was uh, uh, Daichi Abe, right? Who was the who yeah. won the welterweight title? Another fighter. Yeah. Only five and zero. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> and jumps over to the UFC, right? But I Super thought that fast. Abe, he was more ready than Kondo. Yeah, yeah. To right, go right. in there and fight, and he pro- he kind of proved it. You know, he, he kind of had the he octagon did. jitters in the fight that he had. But yeah. man, he got power in his hands, though. Like, yeah, that's no uh, doubt. Right. He was, I mean, in his title match against uh, Miura, and Miura is no slouch. Miura was already the champion. Uh, uh, he was—he was a professional boxer. He wasn't just a professional boxer. He was ranked number one as a professional boxer, boxer in Japan. And uh, oh, and, and, I, and I saw Abe get get rocked a little bit in the first round. And I was wondering, oh, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? But and I saw him get a little wide-eyed, like, oh, shit, you know, this is, uh, this is intense. You know, I could see that, oh, shit, like, face. <laughs> he did it a couple of times. <laughs> you know, he's still young, so he's, ha- he's having a hard time, like, um, keeping that poker face. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but he came back, and, he, and he, he came back. He regained his composure, and then he rocked Abe and ended up smashing him again in the second round and, uh, and taking the belt. So I was, like, I was very impressed. And I was and I uh, and I was wondering. Oh, I wonder if that was uh, um, at the end of the first round. I was like, Oh, I wonder if uh, Abe just got lucky, you know. But uh, you know, I, I really looked at those combinations. They were just good combinations, just good movement. It was just good action from him, you know. Definitely skills is what won it. He wasn't lucky at all. I think. So, yeah, well, definitely. One characteristic about Abe is like he's not afraid to stand in the pocket and throw those combinations and right, maybe take right. a punch, and that kind of helps to be able to get into certain positions to knock people out you know right, that fearless right. attitude that he has and he's 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 really young too like he's yeah. in his early 20s i think so yeah he has a good future he fought a korean uh who is a brawler that has he's knocked out a bunch of dudes and he went in there and stood with him and took his punches and at the end of the third i think like knocked him down and then did wow. a sick ass judo throw <laughs> basically oh, yeah. won the fight off that because you know he was a yeah. judo champion that's right that's right and which is a big deal when you're from japan the land of judo you know yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah now going to uh another aspect of the ufc japan which was the guy uh mizuto hirota right he missed right the now i know you yeah. kind of was close to that situation can you explain like what ex- exactly happened with that yeah, so I've known Mizuto, uh, Hirota, uh, Misuto Hirota for a while. You know, we trained at Gutsman Dojo for, for a long time together. And then he moved over to Cave, uh, which is Nasakusa. But, uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, like, uh, I saw him a week before. We had a friend's wedding. And, 
yeah, you know, he always has a really hard weight cut, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he's one of the guys I, I know for certain, you know, like uh, a lot of, you know, professional fighters that I've met, you know, sometimes I, 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 I'm a little, I question like how, how pure they, their, their, uh, their supplementation habits are, but, but he is one of the guys, he doesn't take diuretics. He doesn't take, uh, uh, any performance dancing stuff. And so his weight cut is amazingly heavy. Like, uh, I think he's dropping usually like 14, 15 K, but, uh, he just wasn't able to make weight this time. And, um, it was the first time in his career. Uh, and, uh, unfortunately, well, and his uh, opponent said they were still going to take the fight. And so he was very happy about that. But on the day of the fight, the, uh, the doctors, uh, the, he couldn't pass the doctor check. So apparently affected his body a little bit uh, more than, uh, you know, than, than uh, we had hoped for, you know. So he wasn't able to recover. His, uh, you know, his, uh, wasn't hydrated enough or he didn't pass the, uh, the exam that the doctors had for him. Well, I think that's good. I think that yeah. the doctors checking him again is, uh, and then telling him, hey, man, we don't think you should fight. That, I think that's great because you don't want someone to go in there and get really hurt because you, you just seen what happened in Singapore, right? Yeah. The guy that yeah. He cared about, he died of cardiac right. arrest, you know, and that, know. and he did all the checkups too. And then they just let right. him fight because they thought nothing was wrong. And then he died of a, basically a heart attack. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, people don't understand who, who don't fight and don't do these, these 10 plus kg weight cuts. Uh, you, uh, you know, boxers do it too. Sometimes they still fight and, and they get brain trauma and they die like the day after the fight. That's happened here in Japan as well. But, uh, it's really, really fucking hard. It's one of the fucking hardest things to do. Uh, and a lot of fighters now, like the the uh, the style in which they cut weight now, is very dangerous. We have a lot of Brazilian fighters that come over here too, and they cut a fucking lot of weight. And they usually do a lot of the weight the day before, or the day of the the weigh-in. So you, they'll be cutting, um, you know, five plus kg. There was a fighter that did nine kg in one day, one day, just water weight, you know. And you see him. Uh, his, his uh, teammate just holding him, you know, holding him in his arms, like walking him down the stairs because he looks like a, like a skeleton, you know. But uh, like I said, uh, a lot of these people have like questionable like uh, practices. Like the next day, then, you know, <laughs> and, you, know you, you hear all the stories like back in their hotels, you know, like, you know, people, fighters still use the IV drips and whatnot. Which well, you know, like I've good. never fought professionally, you know, like, mm. uh, but I, I always wondered like, how hard is the weight cut you know myself i always wondered that so i was like okay yeah. i'm gonna do the weight cut myself <laughs> i'm gonna experiment right so, yeah, yeah. so i had a jujitsu tournament uh, oh, a right. couple of years ago or last year right and then oh, i was wow. like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna go compete at this weight so i had to cut eight kilos or oh, was it? damn no yeah eight kilos eight to nine kilos right around that wow within All like right. a a week a little bit less than a week. Oh, that's uh, that. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, even that the real deal. That's even the real deal. That, <laughs> even yeah. eight kilos in less than a week was yeah. fucking hell. <laughs> like at night, like yeah. I would like lay oh, on man. my like floor and just like oh yeah, just lay there. Just okay. Now I'm just gonna sleep yeah. right here and then get up yeah. the next day. And then I was still training, like yeah. to, for yeah, the tournament. Exactly. So right. the day, you know, like in jujitsu, it's like the day of the tournament you weigh yourself. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. That's gotta be so hard. Yeah. So yeah. I went to my, like, I, I did that. I, I made weight. Actually, I was underweight. I was like, damn, why am I underweight? <laughs> I, was underweight. Yeah. I was mad about that. And then I went to compete in my first match. I had no strength. Oh man. I could yeah. not do anything. I lost like yeah. 12 to nothing on points or 14 to oh, right. nothing on points. I was like, it was embarrassing. Yeah. It was embarrassing. Like, yeah, yeah. No. Laughing at me. <laughs> I, I've, I've done the same thing in, uh, in college uh, wrestling because it's the same day weigh-ins and stuff too. So in college, we usually cut, we usually cut about, 10, uh, about nine, nine, eight, nine kg is what you can do. That's probably the max you do for a same day uh, weigh-in. But yeah, I mean, I mean, you got you got to carry that scale with you, man. Like us fighters, man, we pretty much carry that scale. It's in our backpack. It's part of the training bag, man. Every everything you do, you jump on the scale. 
every piece you take, you jump on the scale. <laughs> you really can't touch it. And then you're just in zombie mode the whole time. You just wake up for practice, you know. You just wake up for the gym, you know. That's it. I remember <laughs> only eating, like, watermelon because for some reason, watermelon was solid, but it was, like, ice cream. So, like, yeah. you hit your mouth is that sugar, too. So, it's just, like, oh. it's the oh, greatest man. <laughs> in the world, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't understand. Not going to a Michelin star restaurant. No, no, you're not going to get the – no. Cut 8, 9 kg and then have a – and put a little, just a little bit of salt on your fingertip and just put that on your tongue. Oh my <laughs> fucking God. That is amazing. <laughs> For real. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. If you never, that's why I would put myself through it because I can't talk shit about people like, oh, that motherfucker, he didn't cut weight. You know, like yeah. that's the fucking his job. And I was like, man, yeah. I can't say that. I'm going to try to do that myself. <laughs> and even like yeah. me doing it in like a week span, because I respect the fighters that cutting like eight kilos in a day. Yeah. That's, Oh my that's god! Beyond yeah. ima- that's beyond imagination. You know, people don't understand. Well, well, yeah, well, it's dangerous. You know, and the only way you're gonna cut eight kilo or nine kilo in a day is with uh, diuretics, and whatnot, which makes it even more dangerous because yeah. your body isn't able to. Uh, you're not able to stop uh, cutting weight. So you know, say you, you're taking diuretics and you, and you drop your eight kilograms. Well, you took this medicine that's sending the, these messages to your to your body. These these uh your hormones say hey let's keep pissing let's keep pissing let's keep uh, expelling the water but you're already at dangerous like uh dehydration levels you know mm-hmm. that's where people get uh, get hurt and get sick you know <laughs> but uh, now, we'll see you know yeah, yeah. well at least you know like you said you don't have many years that you want to fight so you don't have to worry about cutting weight and yeah you know you can actually, eat yeah. you want and yeah, actually, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I think it's time to retire because uh, I just turned 36 last month. And uh, my last fight in March, you know, it was a really hard weight cut. It was the hardest it's ever been. And I was, and I had a really good training cap, but I went up uh, and I had my fight and, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and I felt all the energy gone. My coaches after were like, oh, and I ended up losing, you know, uh, you know. Uh, but my coach was like, oh, you weren't in shape. I was like, what? What are you talking about? You know, I'm in shape. You know, I was in shape, but it was just the weight cut. I just didn't recover, you know. Is it, so, you know, it happens. You, you, know, you so. know, sometimes you see guys that have terrible weight cuts, and you could tell. Yeah. But oh, then yeah. the next yeah. day, they fucking perform like that never even happened, that weight cut. Yeah. And that's yeah. what well, amazes me about some fighters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, recovery, that's a skill, too. It's something you can't mess around, too. Uh, recovery is uh, usually when, uh, after I, uh, um, after weigh-ins, you can't even, first you take a little sip of something warm so you warm up your body. And then you got to drink the, uh, uh, the, uh, the dehydration. Uh, electrolytes? Uh, drinks, drinks. Yeah, the electrolytes and the saline, the saline drinks. Oh, okay. so, so I'll drink about two liters of that slowly, you know, a liter an hour. Uh, and then I'll drink uh, about maybe two or three more liters of water, but a liter every hour. And then I'll have my first meal. Because if you eat too early, then you just shit everything out. You just have, uh, you just, you're just going to shit everything out. You're just going to have diarrhea the whole day. <laughs> and, you no, know, honestly, yeah. You gotta, and then you got to eat. The first meal has got to be like soup or really heavy salt mm. content, heavy, uh, a lot of carbohydrates. Get your, uh, your, your, your carbohydrates back. Yeah, it, it, that's a skill too, you know. So, you know, those guys, man, it, it's not just a lot of uh, discipline to get down to weight. It's also recovery. They, they're doing it well. They did a good job, you know. And people mess up a lot of times too, you know. But don't, don't you think like you being, you having a background in wrestling, it really helps you? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh, wait, right? Yeah, it does, you know. And, uh, and Japan too, uh, in general, they don't really have a big weight cutting culture here. So when I first came here and I first started fighting here uh, uh, about 10 years ago, I think the not, 10, 11 years ago was my first uh, professional fight here. But we didn't, I didn't even have to cut weight. You know, I could only, I only had to cut about 3 kg and I'd still be fighting guys my, my same weight class. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until uh, maybe five or six years ago that I made the drop down to featherweight because then, it, then everyone started cutting down, you know. So, uh, so, th- so I think uh, some some Japanese fighters they, they are behind the, the weight cutting uh, 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 techniques, you know. I think uh, Asia is just behind because, like in the states, you could get distilled water easily. Right, right. But in Asian countries, they look at you like 
distilled water. Why you need that? You got to go to the yeah. you got to go to the hospital or to the pharmacy to get that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. I go to pharmacy. They only sell like little like uh, yeah. little small bottles, and it's for like uh, washing out your contact lenses or or, or yeah. giving to 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 plants. You know, like yeah. <laughs> it's not for drinking. It's like oh. <laughs> yeah, people have a tough time with that when they come over to like even like me. I'm in Korea, so even in Korea, they're they have a tough right. time finding distilled water, so usually they give up. And Koreans, they don't really cut weight with distilled water, so. Right, right. Yeah, we don't do way. it here. Yeah. 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 But now, before I let you go, I just want to talk about Pancrase 290. It's coming oh, up. Oh, yeah. Now, we talked about, you know, Tanaka. Uh, yeah, Hiro, Tanaka. Hiroshige Tanaka versus Yuki Nakahara is one of the fights that. Yeah, Nakahara. Yeah, that's for. the one. Uh, right. I see that uh, Daichi. Kitakata is fighting on this card against a Brazilian. He's an exciting guy. Yeah, he's an exciting guy. Um, if you look at this card, like what comes to your mind is like, hey, uh, this guy, this matchup is a good matchup or this guy, you need to see him fight. Well, you just mentioned the, the two fights, uh, Kitakata against that, uh, the Brazilian guy. That's going to be an amazing fight because Kitakata, he's so dynamic. He's, he's like a little Japanese mean, mighty mouse. You know? mm -hmm. He's a really good fighter. Like, unfortunately, he lost against uh, a Tsunabe, but, uh, but it was a really good fight. It was a really good fight. Uh, so I'm, uh, I can't wait to see what he does against uh, the Brazilian guy. Um, like, going, talking about the, uh, the strawweight division, like, Tsunabe, of course, he's the king. But who are the other guys? Like, there's Kitakata, but he lost mm -hmm. to him. Has Tsunabe right. beaten everybody that he needs to beat? He has. He has. He's beaten everybody, like, more than once, too. So, <laughs> so, so I mean, I mean, that's why it's good timing for him to, to, to leave. You know, he's got to fight in Ryzen. He's got to fight UFC or whatever, you know. Or we got to bring somebody from him to fight. You know? Is he a big 115-pounder or... Well, here's the thing. He's a very tall guy, and he is big. He is big. Uh, I'm not sure how hard his weight cut is. Uh, it looks like it's it's pretty hard because I've seen his weight cuts too. He, he gets pretty pretty down there, pretty uh, uh pretty skinny. But uh, but he's he's very very skinny, and he's he's like a lot of Japanese fighters. Like uh, you see a lot of tall lightweights, super yeah. tall lightweights. Yeah. But uh, but he he's very strong for his weight. He's got that wiry strength. I want to see him go fight in the flyweight division in the UFC because he's, yeah. he's up in age. He has nothing to yeah. lose. He dominated right. Japan. He ruled the roost in his country. Right. He might as well just go to the UFC and see what he can do in the flyweight division. If he doesn't do anything, he doesn't do anything, man. Like, it's not his weight yeah. class. I yeah, oh, like, hell yeah, man. Yeah. It'll be a great addition. I don't understand why they didn't put him into that UFC <laughs> Japan card. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of interesting, like uh, – like, look at him. I haven't talked to him very much, but just like just listening to him speak and like uh, reading some of the articles that he's in, like, yeah, uh, you know, he's 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 from Okinawa. You know, he lives in Okinawa, and he and he's really Japanese through and through. You know, mm -hmm. it, it seems like he almost doesn't care. Like he's like ah, you know, like ah, you know, like you know, I'm great here. Like I love it here, and and yeah, he's he's got his own gym. He's a successful guy. Like I, I'm not sure he's very motivated to go out there. I I, feel, I think he feels like he doesn't have anything to prove, but. But I think he's got to do it for the fans, man. He's got yeah. to do it for us, man. Yeah. You know, we want to see that. You know? We want to see that. I want to see yeah. that. I want the world to know who Sanabi is because he's a character, too. It's yeah, not, he is. He's not like he's just a guy that's winning fights. He's a character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, definitely. He'll be there, a there fun was a, guy. Yeah, last year, like a couple of years ago, I remember seeing him after one of his fights. Uh, he, he choreographed this thing totally off script. Uh, he called out uh, one one of the the old school pancreas guys, like like a lightweight guy, came up and called him out, and uh, they did this this whole like uh, one on one scene. It looked like a pro wrestling match, you know, but he just went and did it. He's just, he's just a good self promoter, and then he ended up getting this this uh you know this fight, you know, this which pretty much was just a show, you know, mm -hmm. just for fun. But they had to give it to him just because he's such a good self promoter and a good showman, you know. Remember when Jared Brooks? Were you there when Jared Brooks? After he won, yeah, yeah, he yeah. called out. Did he, didn't he call out Tsunabe? I think he was. Uh, was it Tsunabe or, or Kenzo? Uh, I think Kenzo was the champion at that time. Oh, okay, okay. The, the younger guy. That yeah, was a yeah, good yeah. fight. Yeah, he was Tsunabe or, or yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, Kento, Kento, uh, Kambe, Kento Kambe. 
Okay. Kento Kambe. Uh, Kento Kambe is another really good lightweight. Uh, that's one match we didn't see at uh, uh, Kento Kambe. I'm not sure what weight class he fights in again. Uh, if, he, if he's the uh, same weight class as Tsunabe or if it was the one as... Um, Flyweight? Uh, Senzo. Senzo, yeah. Or, or the okay. same one as Senzo. But he, but he had an injury, so he's been out for a long time. Uh, now, but he's another, another exciting guy. Another guy that I see is uh, making his uh, return is Hayoki. After yeah, he's Hiyoki, knocked yeah. out, he's returning and fighting uh, Hikaya, which is actually a pretty big matchup for both these guys, right? Yeah, and I'm super interested to see that what happens there because uh, for Hiyoki, it's his comeback fight. And a lot of times when you see a guy getting knocked out like that, you don't know how they're going to recover. Like a lot of times when they get a bad knockout, when they come back, they're kind of a different character. You know, that something changes, you know, something breaks down a little bit. So we'll see if he's the same Hiyoki or not, you know. But we'll see, you know. I forgot some fighter was telling me, like, every time you get knocked out, a part of your soul <laughs> dies. Is a fighter told me that on the podcast one time, and I was like, a little piece dies every time. It's like a video game. You only have this much, like, yeah. energy in your body. So every time, it, you know, you get knocked out, it just shrinks. So Yeah, well. I don't know if you're so you lose a little bit of your soul, but uh, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I've been knocked out before, but but you know, I'm you know, I don't think I'd go that far. But but definitely, you, you start to lose your chin. Uh, uh, you start to lose the resistance to your chin. It, once you get knocked out, like your your body like knows that oh shit, you know, next time I get hit again, I'm gonna drop. You know, I'm gonna. Uh, so you, your chin does wear down after a while. Like the more fights you get hit, and uh, of course you got to worry about uh, your brain damage, man. Your yeah. brain, man. Yeah, I mean, it happens, man. I have, I have a lot of uh, teammates who, who are really big brawlers who don't go down very easily but get punched in the head a lot. And, you know, now we're all, like, in our late 30s and they're slurring, you know, leaving the keys in their, in their uh, motorcycle and stuff like that. Like, where did I put my keys? It's, it's in your bike, bro. You know, like, uh, you know, it happens, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just part of the game, you know. Like, people yeah. can't be shocked too much because everybody knows the dangers of, you know, throwing fists to heads and stuff like that shins to right heads, right you know yeah uh, the last the oh, last nice. guy on the card is akaniro gono veteran oh, yeah and he's making his return to pancreas um what do you think about him like it's uh, yeah. are, are a lot of these guys should <laughs> they retire <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they kind of should, but you gotta remember these are these are uh, Japanese dudes, you know. They you, you can't hold them to the same standards as, as like you know, you know Western American fighters, you know. Like uh, I feel like just being, you know, I, I got a little bit of a, uh, uh, Asian blood. My mother, she's a Palawan, which is like a, a Micronesian uh, island, and uh, I got a little bit Japanese in me as well. But I feel like just being Japanese adds five to ten years on on your on your lifespan. <laughs> But uh, but no, Gono's another guy where uh, uh, he's uh, uh, he's a big showman. You know, he's a great showman. You know, it's a lot of fun to watch that guy fight. Oh yeah, he's he's yeah. one of the best showmen to ever grace the you know the cage. Yeah, I think he's like the first one of the first guys that actually came out there in his entrance song, and and he had like a dance. It was choreographed, and uh, he did the glasses and the, the the feather bow and the you know and the, and the, dress. the gold. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I hope we see that. I hope we see that uh, next week, you know, on the 8th. Yeah, um, so, you know, like, you know, commentating for Pancrase, like, at every event, like, when you watch it, you're, does the blood boil? Like, you're like, oh, when am I going to get in? When am I going to get in? Like, when am I going to get in there? Do they ever ask you, like, guy, yeah. are you going to fight soon? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. come up to you or? Oh, yeah. Oh, every time, man. Every time. Like, oh, when are you going to fight? Um, I think being there so long, too, you know, and I think every time I do show up, you know, I try to give a good show. So, you know, whenever I'm ready, I, I can have a fight. Uh, recently, I've been trying to do this thing where uh, uh, I, since I lost against Malagari, so I decided to go to deep change events a little bit and try to chase the belt over there. Unfortunately, I lost my last fight against uh the guy he just moved up a weight class and he took the belt at lightweight but uh you know we don't know i don't know maybe i'll just have a couple of good retirement fights or maybe i'll go for the belt you know one more time you know but uh but we'll see we'll see what we'll happens see. But, yeah. it, it, it's cool that you kind of have that that attitude of like hey we'll see what happens you know you're no yeah. you're not in no rush seems like you're very comfortable with what you're doing 
you have a good you, you have a pretty good job commentating you know yeah, yeah, I mean, I, yeah it's fun <laughs> it's, it's fun, gotta you know? be fun you know like you're watching all the fights close up you're you're basically it's like the the history like the rebirth basically of pancreas happening right now you know yeah huge for a while and then it kind of like downturned a little bit but now right, it's right. like the the talent is rich the talent is deep right and and you know it's and it's also the rebirth of of Japan, japanese mma in general too i think you know and uh yeah it's great to be here like i actually came here to japan 14 years ago and when i started fighting professionally that's when uh, pride was right at the end of its of its peak so you know i feel like oh man i missed the boat i missed the boat but like it's great i could be here in another way you know where there's the rebirth where even though my career is ending i can be here you know be uh behind the tables you know commentating and calling the fights you know in in some way or another you know and when i do retire i do want to open up a gym here and start coaching the next level of guys you know so i think that'd be fun too oh definitely that's uh you gotta you gotta use your experience and your knowledge to kind of incubate and grow the right, sport right, that right, you right. love, right? And bring, yeah. you never know, you might have a guy come in, you open the gym, you might have the next John Jones come into your gym from Japan. <laughs> and you don't yeah. know when you build that guy up, you know, it's like, that's a beautiful thing right there where you yeah. can like grow somebody into a spectacular fighter. Right, right. Yeah, that'd be, that's definitely the idea. That'd be, that'd be wonderful. All right, guy, thank you for coming on. I know you're a busy man. Like you said, you got a lot of things going on, but uh, <laughs> if you want to, you could catch guy commentating for Pancras on UFC Fight Pass. The next event is Pancras 290. Uh, in what, what city is it? It's still in Tokyo, right? Yeah, it's still in Tokyo and it's still different Aidiake. So this year so will be the last year we're fighting in that, that uh, stadium. But different Tokyo, and I just want to say like a, I, I got a date later tonight, so I came out to Asakusa. Nah, sorry, that's why I asked you to push up the, uh, the podcast. It's but I'm right. Asakusa. You can see a uh, sky tree and uh, uh, some of the cool sights here in Tokyo. Let's see. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I can see the background. Yeah, yeah right there, right there, there it is. Okay. There you go. All yeah. right. Well, good luck on your little All right, on your date, and uh, thanks I'll you again, man. Uh, <laughs> Uh, before the next pancreas, because there's, you know, pancreas, like we, we were just talking about, it's in a rebirth, it's growing, there's talent all day, every day. Thanks right, for coming right. along, guy. No, no problem. Next time we'll try to get Stuart out too. That'll oh, be fun. for sure. All right. Okay, th thanks. All right, bye.